I told you about the time that I crawled up an altar to light a candle. I was about 13, and I was in the choir back in the end. It's my turn to be active. Or no, they needed someone to act like that, so I'm going to do it. And this is when they had wax candles, and it wouldn't light, so I literally crawled on top of the altar, took the follower off, punched the wax, and then let the candle out. I don't think God cares if there's candles lit. <laughs> Anyway, it's good to have all of you here today, and I know there are a number of visitors with us. Thank you for being here. Uh, if you have any questions, uh, the bulletin, ask your neighbor. And if they don't know, if they're visitors also, just, just read the really dark parts of the print when you follow along, and then will be fine. Uh, this morning, we are blessed to have Nancy Maurer back again as our organist. We have, we have our act together today. <laughs> you need to know that, that Nancy needs to be reassured that she did nothing wrong when she was here the last time. It was just fun. It was just fun. So the first hymn Nancy says she's not too familiar with, I said, we'll be fine. Again, God just needs to hear something coming out of our, out of our mouths and out of the fingers so important. So thank you for being here. Thank you. Um, there are a lot of announcements. I am not going to read them to you, but I am going to ask you to check them out. And there are some new ones there this week um, that I'm going to point out that I want you to uh, really uh, take a look at. First of all, the backpack thing is on the back of the insert for the hymn. So if you see that, um, that is all there. We, uh, the backpacks are available. We've even had some return today, and we'll put them in here so that we can see them as we go along rather than them over to the fellowship hall. Uh, the other one that I want you to know about is God on Tap. If you are planning to go God on Tap next Tuesday, please let me know by Friday so that I can make your, especially if you're going for dinner, so that I can let the restaurant know who calls coming for them. The other ones that I want you to check out, there is an evening meditation here with Suzanne from the Yoga Place. Uh, coming up later this week. Uh, there is a healing service for COVID victims that uh, will be at Long Park in August. Uh, the, the public is invited to that. Salem Lutheran Church is planning a bus trip. You're welcome to be a part of that. Phew, what else? How many of you are detail-oriented? Okay, so if you would like to help, we are preparing for a flea market slash yard sale slash Craft Fair, Donna, or Darlene, Betty, raise your hand. Patty, Patty, former Craft Fair people here. Patty's working, Patty's, help, Patty's working in organizing a flea market yard sale Craft Fair in October. I'm not saying help, but they would have Cool, great. I love when things come together. Say that, you know, check each other, check each other out to help with um, whatever is going on here. Um, any other announcements? Anybody has questions about? Okay. Um, I have no updates for the prayer list either. Do you have any people or situations to add to our prayer? Where have you seen God at work this week? Where have you seen God's love used to transform people? Come on, I need fodder for my sermon. <laughs> Most of them did not know each other. 
the house is dead. On 322. It's just amazing what a fire truck does. It's amazing what a fire truck does, right? Friday night, 6 o'clock. Rain or moonlight. Let us take a breath. Oh, man. Let us take a breath. Let us breathe in the Holy Spirit as we prepare our hearts and our minds for worship as we listen to the prayer.
rise in body or spirit. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the God of manna, the God of miracles, the God of mercy. Amen. Draw to Christ in seeking God's abundance. Let us confess. God, our provider, help us. It is hard to believe there is enough to share. We question your ways and we differ from the ways of the world which we live in. We turn to our own understanding rather than trust in you. We take offense to your teachings and your ways. Turn to us and get to you. Where else can we turn? Share with us the words of eternal life and feed us for the life in the world. Amen. Beloved people of God, in Jesus, the man from heaven, you are fed and nourished. By Jesus, the worker of miracles, there is always more than enough. Through Jesus, the bread of life, you are shown God's mercy. You are forgiven and loved.
through our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. We pray together. O oh God, powerful and compassionate, you shepherd your people faithfully, feeding and protecting us. Heal nature of us and make us a whole people, that we may abide in justice and peace with your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The apostles gathered around Jesus and told him all that they had done and taught. He said to them, Come away to a deserted place all by yourselves and rest a while. For many were coming and going, and they had no leisure time to eat. And they went away in the boat to a deserted place by themselves. Now many saw them going and recognized them, and they hurried there on foot from all the towns and arrived ahead of them. He went ashore, he saw a great crowd, and he had compassion for them because they were like sheep without a shepherd. He began to teach them many things. When they had crossed over, they came to the land of the Gennesaret and moored the boat. When they got out of the boat, people at once recognized him and rushed about that whole region and began to bring the sick on mats to wherever they heard he was. And wherever he went into villages or cities or farms, they laid the sick in the marketplaces and begged him that they might touch even the fringe of the road. And all who touched it were healed. This 
is the gospel. Sometimes the scriptures that are appointed for us to consider don't necessarily have a concrete story to tell. But instead, I think they give us words and tell us some other experiences so that we might hear these words differently and maybe respond in a new way. Such is what I found in the Gospel of Mark and also from the book of Ephesians today. Now, just out of curiosity, you notice that in Mark, we read a few verses, then we skipped a big passage, and then we went somewhere else. Anybody know what's in the middle of that passage? I'll buy lunch. No guesses? You're close. You're close. It's the feeding of the 5,000. It's the feeding of the 5,000 according to Mark. Now, oh, okay, so you can, I'll, I'll take you all out to dinner. <laughs> okay, so dinner's not going to be till 1 o'clock, but that's okay. Um, we're going to hear the feeding of the 5,000 next week according to John, because now we're going to move out of the, next week we're going to move out of the Gospel of Mark and into the Gospel of John, and we've got six weeks about bread. I'm just warning you. So I challenge you, bring a different kind of bread to worship every week. Just out of curiosity. Follow along with that. But I think what these texts are trying to tell us, we need to understand a few things about the Gospel of Mark. First of all, the writer of Mark wants his congregation to know that a life in Jesus Christ is going to be difficult. You are going to face persecution. You are going to face danger. But he also stresses that when in Jesus Christ, you will also have a life. You will have a new life, a transformed life. Why do you think telling people about Jesus is going to be harmful or be dangerous? Anybody have any ideas? It's different. It's different than what the people knew. Because here was this sick person walking around, maybe on camel, maybe on mules, but walking around and telling about a new kind of living, a new way to live, a way that did away with all of the rules. Don't construe that the wrong way. But rather talked about love. Talked about being in community with one another. Talked about accepting each other's differences. Can you imagine a world where we would all live together and not argue about what someone else is doing? Wouldn't that be glorious? But that's why the earliest disciples and prophets and followers of Jesus were hurt because the people didn't want to hear that. They didn't want to hear that. They were more interested in making sure things were this way or this way. The world in which I live in, it is not this way or this way. It's this way. There are so many differences and so many things that are so unique to each and every one of us. The 30 people here, there are not two of you that are alike. Even sisters are different. But what the gospel of Jesus tries to teach us is that even in that differences, in that uniqueness, that is where life is. That is where community grows. That is where people become more whole. The Ephesians were having trouble too. Because they just wanted to do the things they've always done. We want to follow the commandments. We want to follow this. We want to follow the laws. who is now teaching to the people of Ephesus, are now 
experiencing a life without the presence of Jesus. But they are also experiencing Paul, who has been transformed by having allowing Jesus to be a part of his life. So in Mark, the people had Jesus in their midst. Google is my friend. 
<laughs> that means one third of the Earth's population say they are followers of Jesus. Then why do we have 45,000 different Christian denominations? Figure that one out. Again, Jesus is, or Google is my friend. Jesus is my friend too. Sometimes Google is better. <laughs> Sometimes, not all the time. But think about that. If Christians around the world claim that they are followers of Jesus, why is it so difficult to find a church in which we can all be, that we can all live together? I will never see this, and I doubt that anyone in this room will ever see this. If the Church of Jesus Christ unites us one around the world, because people are involved. Too many people want to live in the time of Moses and Elijah and follow rules and doctrine and dogma. Things that say it has to be you can't change. Where Jesus says to us today, you can live differently. You can change the way you live. You can change. You can open up your heart. You can accept people for who they are. And if they follow Jesus differently, it's okay. It really is okay. But if we can say that I've been transformed by Jesus, my transformation is different than yours, is different than theirs. And if we can say, because of the power of Jesus' words and Jesus' life, that there is new life, there is new hope. The church will grow. And I don't mean grow by numbers in worship. But we will grow by the relationships with the people that we meet that are different than ourselves. These texts are about, for me, Christian unity. And learning to live together with Jesus. Learn to know that that is the center. That is the core thing that all of us can agree on. And it doesn't matter that we have different things and different lifestyles and different genders and, and different ethnicities and different skin colors and different vocations. What matters is that we can claim that Jesus is our Savior. And because of Jesus' death and his resurrection, you have a new life. You know that Jesus died because of that. That's the reason Jesus died. He offered something new, and the authorities did not like it. So they thought that they were to kill him. In his death. It's in Jesus' death and resurrection that we still talk about Jesus 2,000 years later. Think about that one. Who else do you talk about that's been around for 2,000 years?
I'm looking over here because that's kind of right here. But those of us that maybe don't, you know, that's why I'm in the middle. Those of us that don't necessarily use social media, we have our ways too. Whether it's phone calls, whether it's cards, whether it's shopping, how many people you see along the way. Just think of how many people you can give and change a new life for. That's called sharing. That's called God's love. That's called the new church.
Christ and sustained by the Spirit, we offer our prayers for the Church, the world, and for all of creation. Tend your Church, O God. Encourage bishops and pastors and deacons in their proclamation of the Gospel. Raise up new leaders and encourage those pursuing the call to ministry. Embolden all the baptized to embody your love and justice. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Restore your creation, O oh God. Sustain croplands and pastures and safeguard all farm animals and livestock. Preserve lakes, rivers, and streams that offer refreshment. Revive lands recovering from natural disasters, especially the lands in the western states. And also, for areas in Europe who are experiencing flooding, protect the coastlands of each country that are threatened by rising oceans. Hear us, O oh God. Mercy is great. Reconcile the nations, O oh God. Break down the dividing walls that make us strangers to one another. Unite us as one human family. Equip leaders to deal wisely with conflict. Guide diplomats who seek peaceful solutions. Hear us, O oh God. Hear us. Hear us. Hear us. Heal your people, O oh God. Look with compassion on immigrants, exiles, and all who are afraid or feel lost. Give rest to those who are weary, comfort to those who are grieving. Recovery to those who are ill. This day we raise for your embrace, Inez, Gail, Irene, Julie, Naomi, Steve, all of our homebound members, and those, O oh God, whom you know. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Nourish this congregation. Prepare a table where we receive food for our hungry spirits. Renew our commitment to provide for one another and revitalize our ministries of feeding and nurturing hungry neighbors. Open our hearts to persons who desire a renewed relationship with you. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. You lead us home. We give thanks for all who have died, now citizens with the saints, Sandra Hoffler, Sharon Pleasant. As you have received them into your heavenly home, so welcome all of us to dwell in your house forever. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. We lift these and all our prayers to you, O oh God, confident in the promise of your saving love, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. United in spirit, we pray together as Jesus taught. Our Father, Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy, thy kingdom come, come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, kingdom, and the and power, and, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Amen.
blessing of God who provides for us, leads us, and journeys with us be upon you now and forever. Amen. Amen. Remembering the Spirit who sends us out, we affirm that our mission is to provide the community of people who know, love, love, and follow God. Go in peace. You are the body of Christ. Thanks be to God.